So uh, hello everyone, uh, in this video we're gonna take a look at gRPC and understand how a remote procedure call works. So before we move into gRPC, uh, let's start with an introduction of what RPC is. So RPC or remote procedure call is a simple protocol that allows one program to request service from another program that is located on a different computer or server. So it's like a simple function call but this function lies on a different machine. So we have two different machines, uh, a function is defined on one and we need to call that function from a different machine that's uh, a remote procedure call. So it's slightly different than a local procedure call uh, where we call function within our same program. So uh, what I have here is a very simple JavaScript application just has one function called add, takes two arguments, x and y, and the function simply returns the sum of these two arguments, so x plus y right and we can call this function throughout our program as many times as we want uh, pass it to numbers as arguments and the function will return some of these two numbers simple enough all right now what if this function add was defined on a different machine on a different network for example so uh, take a look at this diagram now we have the same old add function uh, but there are two different machines involved so there's machine a and machine B. The add function or procedure is defined on machine A and machine B has a program running that is trying to call this add function. This is a very simple example of RBC or remote procedure call. Uh, simply a function call happening remotely and it's not as simple as a local procedure call because there's a bit more steps involved. So unlike just calling a function for RPC, you first will need to establish a connection between these two machines and then machine B call the function, pass in necessary arguments and machine A will process and return back a result. But thankfully for us, the RPC library, the frame framework that we use takes care of uh, abstracting away all of these complexities so we don't have to work on like low level details of establishing a connection or serializing our data and stuff like that right with that. very simply just make a function call it's very simple it's very intuitive and we'll see how that happens uh later on let's move to grpc next so uh grpc is a modern open source framework for building rpc apis uh, so it was initially released in 2015 uh, by google it's it's faster it's lighter and it supports multiple languages and uh, since just an rpc framework uh, the underlying principles are same so we'll define functions or procedures we'll define what kind of arguments they will take and we'll define what uh, kind of data they will return and we will have implementation so uh, what will the function actually do uh, so it's a very simple example we have a post service and we have three different functions defined so we have update post uh, get post and delete post so this get post function will take post id uh, which is a string and will return the post data update post uh, will take post data uh, will type is post data and will return post data and delete post will take post id and return nothing so uh, the server uh, will implement this interface so as you can see this is not uh, like just interfaces so we don't have actual implementation of them here uh, but server will have those implementation so like just get post isn't enough you have to define uh, what to do with this post id so take the post id make a database query uh, get the post and return it to the user uh, and same for update post and delete post so we need the actual implementation and server side will have that and will have a grpc server running uh, that will handle the client calls on the client side uh, client will have a stop so a stop is basically a uh, just an interface so it doesn't have any implementations uh, like in the server it will just have uh, interfaces like this so we'll have the name of the function the arguments and the return type uh, this way client can make a function call uh, just like and it will be like very similar to calling a local function call. So uh, here's a very simple diagram. Uh, we have three different services. Two of them are running as a client and one as a server. So server side will have functions or methods and define uh, as well as the implementation. So what should happen 
once the functions are called. Client side will have known something known as a stop. And like we talked, uh, stops are basically uh, interfaces. So let's say there are three functions in server. So get post, update post, and delete post. Each of these function will have uh, a body, simply what should happen once the function is called. For example, for the get, get post uh, function, once the function is called and you pass in an ID of a post, a database query will be made, uh, the post will be fetched, the data of the post will be fetched, and then sent back to the server. So that's the implementation of the function. But the stop won't contain all of the implementation detail, but just the name of the function, the type of the argument, and the return type. So this way, uh, it makes it easy to make the function call. So in the client side, it will uh, seem as if you are making a local function call, even though you are not, uh, but it just makes the process a lot easier, uh, a lot more intuitive, uh, and yeah, just easier. So uh, a key aspect of ZRPC are protocol buffers. So these are language and platform neutral um, serializing mechanism. So uh, basically when you uh, when a function calls a remote function, the data needs to be sent and the format in which data gets sent are uh, protocol buffers. So uh, they are more uh, efficient than using JSON or XML uh, in terms of speed and sizes. So they are more compact, uh, though you could use uh, JSON or XML. So uh, we define structure in protocol buffers uh, as interfaces and then we can generate uh, client and server side code uh, through them. Let's take a look at a code example. So uh, we define services for our application in uh, our dot proto file. Uh, so it's our service definition language. So in this case, we have just one service called Krita. Inside our services, we define methods or procedures. Uh, these are like functions, functions that will reside on server that clients can call. In this case, there is just one function called say hello. It takes hello request as argument and returns hello reply as response. So hello request and hello response uh, have their own types. So this is like a complex type built up of uh, simpler types. So hello request uh, has uh, one argument uh, called name of type string and hello reply has just one called message of type string. So when this say hello function is called, a name has to be provided, type is string as argument, and what you and what it returns is a message, which type is also a uh, string. After def defining this service in dot proto file, we can then add on various commands uh, or yeah tools and that comes with gRPC that will compile this file and create both a client side and a server side. Uh, code that we can use in our application. So uh, next up we have service methods. Uh, service methods define how client and server can communicate. So how they can send data and stuff like that. So ZRPC provides four different service methods. First is Unity RPC, which follows a simple request response pattern. Uh, so client sends a re uh, request and server sends back a response. It's just a single uh, request and a single response. In server streaming, uh, client sends one request uh, and then server sends back multiple or streams of responses. Uh, for example, for a application uh, that solves real-time data feeds, client will send one request and server will uh, continuously send back uh, data or uh, uh, real-time data uh, back to client. Next up, we have client streaming, uh, which is opposite of server streaming. So client will send multiple streams of data, uh, server will respond back with one uh, single response. So for example, uh, when a client uh, needs to upload a large file, uh, instead of uploading everything at once, uh, because that file can be like used, uh, we could break it down into chunks and operate small chunks uh, at a time. Uh, so this uh, kind of method, client will send stream of data, multiple data, and server can the end respond with just one response. And finally, we have bidirectional streaming, uh, where both client and server can send multiple data streams of data at once. So our connection was established, and they are free to uh, send multiple 
data uh, as they call them. Uh, an example would be real time chat application. So finally, let's take a look at some advantages of using gRPC. Uh, so first off, we have binary serialization. So we already talked about protocol buffers and how they are used. Uh, and um, the data, uh, once they are serialized using protocol buffer, are smaller size, so faster to transmit than uh, other methods like JSON or XML. Next up is STP2. Uh, so STP2 is used uh, by default, uh, which enables multiplexing. So multiple data can go pass through a single connection. We don't need to uh, create a new connection for each request, uh, which is uh, efficient. Next is error compression, so error section of your packet can become compressed, uh, which allow, which uh, provides lower latency. Next up, we have streaming support. So we are talking about three different kinds of streaming: server side, uh, client side, and bidirectional streaming. And they are efficient for large data transfer. And finally, uh, multiple language support. So uh, protofiles can be compiled to multiple languages, JavaScript, Python, and uh, many more. Thank you. Finally, uh, let's take a look at a code example. So we're gonna implement a gRPC server on Node. Uh, so let's quickly uh, go over our proto file. It's uh, so the same we saw earlier. So There's one service called Greeter, which has one method called say hello, takes in hello request and sends back hello reply as a uh, response. The hello request has name of type string and hello reply has message of type string. So this is my package.json file uh, for this project. I uh, installed two uh, dependencies, uh, zrpc.js and protoloader. So this will be used uh, now uh, when you implement the server. And I have one script here that I found on the docs. And what this script does is takes a look at our proto file and generates necessary types uh, for uh, using the, uh, that proto file. So these types can then be used on our application in our server. Uh, when we define, uh, when we build our server, and this is uh, the project structure here. Uh, so we have uh, our server.js file, our package JSON, and a proto folder which contains our beta.proto file. So next, when we run uh, the script, uh, then inside our proto file, we will see a few more uh, TypeScript files. Uh, These are basically definition, a uh, type definition for uh our proto file so we can take a look at one of them uh the ts which defines our Twitter service and basically it's an interface and we can use them uh, in our application uh, when we define uh, our server now uh, let's take a look at our server.js file so this is where we have defined our grpc server so first of all we input two packages uh, grpc and proto loader next we load our proto file so this is the path so our Twitter proto file was inside a proto folder and then we load it and uh, load the creator service that we have defined here so there's just one service there were multiple service we could uh, input it on we have one creator service so that's what we're importing next we have a main function and uh, inside this main function we have a grpc server initialized we have a server object and then we start adding services to them so in our case there's just one service uh, called creator which we have imported here so we're just gonna uh, point to that service and then uh, as the second argument we pass in an object uh, give value pairs and the key will be name of methods so only one method again called say hello so that's what we have here a say hello method and it takes uh, and then we define a function so what what function should run uh, once the say hello method is involved remotely so this is the function it takes into uh, uh, arguments so the callback function takes a call object and a callback object call object uh, contains uh, information about the request and callback is used to send back a uh, response uh, to the client so uh, in this case we are just accessing this name property so as you can see the hello request has a name property so that's what we're accessing and we are crafting a new message it's nice to meet you and the name that comes in uh, with the re uh, request and then uh, we call the callback uh, function to send back a response to the client. So the first argument is error. Since there is no error, uh, we just send back null. And the second argument, we send back an object uh, with the message. So uh, the reply will have a message. So that's what we send back. And then uh, we bind this server to a IP and port. So it's, it will be listening uh, in localhost in port 5001. 
and uh, we just on the main function uh, so this will start our song uh, so now let's run this server and test it out using uh, postman so a uh, node server details as you can see uh, it says server running on port 5001 so let's open postman uh, we're going to create a new request and it will be a new grpc uh, request so the url will be localhost port 5001 and since our server is listening on this port and then we have to select a method which method to call so obviously uh postman wouldn't know what methods are uh available so, uh, but what we can do is we can import our proto file here so we'll go to our project folder and select uh, this creator.proto uh, and this way uh, postman will parse uh, this proto file and take a look at what methods are available so as you can see says there's one service called greeter and one method inside it called say hello so we can call this and if we invoke this function call uh, as expected we get back a response and call message and says nice to meet you and uh, undefined so uh, if you take a look at our code uh, this was uh, the message but uh, we access the name property from the request and send it back uh, but since we didn't uh once when we made this function call we didn't set any name so it uh sent back undefined so let's actually send back a name and let's say jack so we, we will pass in this name argument and set it to jack and when we invoke this message call we'll get back nice to meet you jack so basically what happened is once we call this say hello method uh this callback function ran, uh, this message was crafted, and then this callback function uh, sent back the response to us. So there you go, uh, this was a very simple implementation of AGRPC server on JavaScript. Thank you.